Welcome back! <laughs> I'm finally back for the fourth part of the Legion Artifact Appearance Guide. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to get back. My computer is finally home from repairs, I've got internet, I've got my microphone. It's been a whole mess honestly and I'm just happy to be back making videos again. Despite my lack of new videos, the support for the former ones has been absolutely incredible. So thank you so much to all of you who's watched them and throw me comments. Today we're finally talking about mages. As mentioned, I've never played a mage before myself past level 10. However, as they continue to annoy me in arenas, perhaps I should stop making one. On that note, let's begin the guide with fire mages. Fire mages in Legion are given the ancient highborn runeblade Fellow Malone, which means flame strike. Equipping the blade will automatically also give the mages the heart of the phoenix in their offhand. The weapon is set to harness the very essence of flame. Honestly, if this weapon in itself isn't enough to play a fire mage, I don't know what is. You unlock the default appearance of Fellow Malone in gold when you begin your class war campaign in Legion. The purple tint of the sword and the heart of the phoenix is unlocked once you've recovered one of the pillars of creation from one of the broken isle zones. The ages of Agrimar from Stormheim, the hammer of Kaskoth from High Mountain, the tears of Elune from Valshara, the tight stone of Golganeth from Azuna, or the eye of Amon Zul from Suramar. The green color of Philomelon is unlocked by recovering the light's heart and bringing it to your class hall. You do so by first picking up the quest A Falling Star from Katgal and Dalron, here, and following the quest chain from there. Lastly, you will obtain the blue tint of the artifact weapon by completing the major campaign in your glass hall with the achievement Fighting with Style Classic. The second artifact appearance for Fire Mages is Pride of the Sunstriders, and you unlock the four tints as follows. For the red and green tints of Pride of the Sunstriders, they will both be unlocked with the Glass Hall campaign achievement, Forged for Battle. Before the release of BFA, you had to unlock every artifact trait for the Power Realized achievement, but that's no longer necessary. Furthermore, the purple tint of the artifact weapon was previously unlocked with the Part of History achievement, which required you to complete the research history of your artifact. But today, you just need to hit level 50 for the color to be unlocked. The blue tint is not unlocked as easily as the rest, unfortunately, and requires you to complete the archaeology achievement this side up. The achievement asks you to complete 8 rare archaeology achievements in the Broken Isles. These projects are on a two-week rotation, so they can take a while and be careful not to miss one. You pick up the quests for the projects at your archaeology trainer in Dalaran. For the third appearance, Phoenix Rebirth, you unlock the green tint by completing the Balance of Power questline. As a reward, you'll be given the appearance as well as the Improving on History achievement. The questline is rather lengthy though, so prepare to be patient and tenacious. There are several quests, including gathering of resources and completion of mythic dungeons. I'll link the list of quests in the description below. After unlocking the green tint, you can unlock the turquoise tint by defeating 8 out of 10 world bosses from this list, to get the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The purple tint of Phoenix Rebirth is a reward for completing a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon. If you haven't already achieved this, a Shadowlands dungeon currently counts. Lastly, for the red tint, you must complete the Glory of the Legion Hero achievement associated with a list of Legion dungeon achievements. For PvP achievements, Fire Mages can unlock the Lavaborn Edge artifact appearance. Reaching on a level 10 will unlock the red tint. By on a level 30, you'll unlock the green tint of Lavaborn Edge. Should you reach on a level 50, you will be rewarded with the purple tint. And are you just a great PvPer and obtain on a level 80, you'll unlock the blue tint of Lavaborn Edge. Fire Mage's Mage Tower Challenge back in Legion rewarded skilled players with a Timebender's Blade in blue and gold with the quest An Impossible Foe. Quite the adequate name. 
As the challenge is over and no longer doable, presently it's impossible to unlock this artifact appearance if you haven't already. However, did you complete the challenge in the past, you can still unlock the other three colors if you haven't already. To unlock the red tint of Time Bender's Blade, you must complete 10 different Legion dungeons on any difficulty. You do not need to use Group Finder, and you also don't need to have the Time Bender's Blade equipped, which was a change made after patch 7.3. For the purple tint, you have to win 10 rated battlegrounds. And for the green tint of Time Bender's Blade, you must defeat Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty. Again, by yourself, with a few friends, or in a big group, that's up to you. There is, of course, also a hidden artifact appearance for Fire Mages. In their case, it is the Star's Design, a truly unique looking sword in pastel tints. I rarely see weapons have in WoW. What's also interesting about this weapon is that it on occasion leaves the corpses of killed mobs all charred and smoldering. And if you have it equipped when talking to elven blacksmiths in Dalaran, it will yield some unique dialogue. Can't say that about many weapons in WoW either. To obtain this special weapon, you must get the item The Star's Design, which drops some mobs in Suramar pretty randomly. The highest drop rate, 1.3%, is from Felstrider Enforcers. So you're in for a bit of a grind unless you get lucky. After obtaining the item, you unlock the sky blue tint of the star's design. After unlocking the first color, you can unlock the other three. For the purple tint, you unlock it by completing 30 Legion dungeons. As with previous artifact appearances, you don't need to use Group Finder and should be able to do it at your own pace. Furthermore, after patch 7.3, you no longer need to have the star's design equipped while doing these dungeons. Completing 200 world quests anywhere in WoW between Legion and Shadowlands will unlock the red tint of the star's design. And finally, for the pale gold color, you must kill a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. Frost mages are given the great staff Ebonchill, once wielded by Elodie, or Elodie, the first guardian of Terrisfall until his passing. It is said that Ebonchil contained a sliver of Elodie's might, which was more than most mage you could ever hope of wielding. You unlock the blue tint of Ebonchil automatically upon beginning your class hall campaign and choosing to pursue the artifact. For the green tint, you must recover one of the pillars of creation. The purple tint is a reward for recovering Light's heart and bringing it to your class hall at the end of a falling star questline. And you unlock the red tint of Ebonchil once you complete the first major class hall campaign. The Guardian's focus appearance adds a bit more detail to Ebonchil. When you complete your class hall campaign with the achievement Forge for Battle, you'll automatically unlock both the blue and the green tints of Guardian's focus. The purple tint is unlocked when you reach level 50, and completing the archaeology achievement This Side Up reward you with the red tint of Guardian's focus. Flow of the First is unlocked in light blue upon completion of the Balance of Power questline. You'll know you've done so when you get the Improving on History achievement. Killing 8 out of 10 world bosses for the Unleashed Monstrosities will unlock the green tint of Flow of the First. For the purple tint, you must complete and time a 15 plus Mythic Keystone Dungeon. At this time, that'll be a Shadowlands dungeon. The red and gold tint is a reward upon completing the Glory of the Legion Hero achievement. Archmedia's Will appearance and its various tints are devoted to PvP achievements. You'll unlock the green tint of Archmedia's Will upon reaching Honor Level 10. At Honor Level 30, you'll unlock the blue tint. The purple tint is a reward for reaching Honor Level 50. And if you reach on level 80, you'll unlock the red tint of Archmage's Will. For Frost Mages, the Legion Mage Tower Challenge rewarded the magnificent Elite Mages artifact appearance. If you ask me, it's a little unfair to those who weren't around for Legion that they don't have a shot at this anymore. The weapon looks like it's made of ice crystals, perfect for a Frost Mage. Completing the Mage Tower Challenge unlocked the silver blue tint of Elite Mages. Today, you can no longer unlock Elite Mages as the challenge has unfortunately ended. 
The white tint can still be unlocked if you have completed the Mage Tower challenge in the past and then completing 10 different Legion dungeons. The purple tint is a reward for winning 10 rated battlegrounds if you have already unlocked the challenge artifact. Lastly, defeating Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty will unlock the turquoise tint, again if you have already unlocked elite mages by completing the Mage Tower challenge. Frostfire Remembrance is the hidden artifact appearance for Frost Mages. You acquire the hidden artifact first in gold by obtaining the item Ever Burning Crystal. Ever Burning Crystal will be given to you by Asher through a scenario once you successfully get teleported to Frostfire Ridge from a class hall. Now, to do this, first you must unlock the teleportation nexus from your class hall at Artifact Knowledge Level 4. Unlocking this will generate 5 portals each day in your class hall. Every day, there is then a small chance that stepping into a portal will take you to Frostfire Ridge. You can tell that this will happen when you get the emote, you hear a strange crackling sound from the portals downstairs, so keep an eye out for the message and don't be spooked to go back through the portals if they take you to Frostfire Ridge. Doing so, will result in a chance wasted and another waiting period for that crackling sound to be heard again. You can use any of the portals to get to Frostfire Ridge once that emote has popped. After unlocking Frostfire Remembrance, you can unlock the purple color by completing 30 Legion Dungeons. You can choose to do this in a group or by yourself and the dungeon difficulty doesn't matter. Completing 200 world quests anywhere between Legion and Shadowlands will unlock the green tint. And lastly, for the blue tint, you must defeat a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. Aluneth, the great staff of the Magna, is the artifact weapon given to arcane mages in Legion. The staff is named after the powerful arcane entity trapped within, after it was defeated by the guardian Eowyn the only female guardian of Teresful. Still today, in Shadowlands, should you transmog your weapon into Aluneth, you can hear the whispers of the entity bound within the staff. You first unlock the purple color of Aluneth when you embark on your class hall campaign and pursue the weapon. Afterwards, you can unlock the blue tint by recovering one of the pillars of creation. The white tint is a reward for recovering Light's heart and bringing it to your class hall. And completing the first major campaign in your class hall will reward you with the green tint of Aluneth. The second appearance associated with Aluneth is Guardian Spire. You unlock the pink and gold tint as well as the purple tint with the achievement Forged for Battle. You get this achievement when you finish your class hall campaign. The pink and silver tint of Guardian Spire will be unlocked when you reach level 50. And by completing the lengthy archaeology achievement This Side Up, you can unlock the green and pink color. Magna Unleashed is the appearance you unlock by completing the Balance of Power questline with the achievement Improving on History. Doing so will unlock the blue tint. Afterwards, you can obtain the purple color by killing 8 out of 10 world bosses for the achievement Unleashed Monstrosities. When you complete, and time, a 15 plus Mythic Keystone Dungeon, you'll be rewarded with the silver tint of Magna Unleashed. Finally, with the Glory of the Legion Hero Achievement, you unlock the green tint of this artifact appearance. PvPing as an Arcane Mage will reward you with the Equin's Fall Artifact Appearance in various colors depending on your honor level. By honor level 10, you'll be rewarded with the purple tint of Equin's Fall. Honor level 30 rewards you with a dark purple tint, Reach on a level 50 and you unlock the pink tint. And finally, after a long grind probably, at on level 80 you will unlock the green tint of Aegwyn's Fall. The Mage Tower challenge for arcane mages, named the God Queen's Fury, rewarded players who completed it with the Eternal Mages artifact appearance. As with all other classes in the Mage Tower challenge, it can no longer be completed in Shadowlands, as the challenge was a feat of strength. Did you succeed in the challenge back in Legion, however, you'd have unlocked the Eternal Mages in a golden color, and you can still today unlock the three other colors. For the purple tint, you must complete 10 different Legion dungeons. This can be done alone, or with others, and on any difficulty. 
For the silver tint, you must win 10 rated battlegrounds. And for the red tint, you must defeat Kul Jaden on heroic difficulty. The hidden artifact appearance for arcane mages is the quirky looking Woolomancer's Charge. The appearance will be unlocked in purple via the item the Woolomancer's Charge, which requires a bit of a weird adventure or treasure hunt. First, you have to polymorph five specific mobs around the Broken Isle zones, one for each zone. A cliffwing hippogriff in Azuna, a high peak goat in High Mountain, a plains rune horn calf in Stormheim, a hardwood doe in Suramar, and a wild dream runner in Belshara. Afterwards, make sure you've reached artifact knowledge 6. There is then a daily chance for a volatile sheep to spawn within the hall of the guardian. When the sheep does spawn, you have to right click it for a couple of times until it explodes. Following this, you must find an extremely volatile Stormheim sheep mob, which will roam around Roomwood in Stormheim. That too must be right clicked a few times until it explodes. After doing so, you need to go to the Tower of Azora in Elwyn Forest, in which you have to complete a short event, which will finally give you the stuff. This is one of the more amusing ways to find a hidden artifact appearance among the wall classes and specs, so have fun with it. After unlocking the hidden artifact appearance, you can also obtain the other three colors. Completing 30 Legion dungeons will unlock the red tint. This can, as with other Legion dungeons, be done alone or in a group on any difficulty. Once you complete 200 world quests in Legion or elsewhere, you will unlock the blue tint. And finally, killing a thousand players of the opposite faction will unlock the golden color of Woolomancer's Charge. And that was the guide for mage artifact weapon appearances. I've been wanting to work on this series for so long and it's just been set back by so many ridiculous events, including my computer needing repairs, me moving and then having no internet. I do apologize to those of you who's been waiting for far too long for a guide on mages. Next, I'll be tackling paladins. Thank you, as always, for watching and I wish you the best of luck in obtaining the artifact appearances you're hunting for. See ya!